A very good morning to you and welcome to K24 this morning. My name is Jeff Morte. Welcome to the show. And as always, as we start, in case it's uh, your first time on the show, what we do is look at your papers, see what you're waking up to, and then dig a bit deeper into you know, the subject of the day. We'll make our centerpiece of our conversation. We love it when you're part of the conversation. You can get me at I am Jeff Morte or at K24 TV. Now, yesterday we were treated to an unlikely scene, that of politicians at a funeral not politicking on the stage. What if this became the norm as far as public gather, uh, gatherings that are not political rallies or campaigns are concerned? The Constitutional Amendment Bill is now at the County Assembly's doorstep and a lot of lobbying and political maneuvering is taking place. But could it be wishful thinking that uh, we have uh, what we saw yesterday taken further and we use that to delink what is a BBI process and elections for 2022? We talk about that on KT4 this morning, but first, as always, the newspaper headlines. Okay, let's see what you have as far as the front page of your PD is concerned. Let's scroll right down there and see what we have. Grand Farewell, they call it. The story of uh, Nyachaya and Haji as one of two national leaders, both in their 80s, who served together in the provincial administration and cabinet, buried on the same day. You can find this story on page 5, 6, and 7 of your people daily um, therein. And of course, as you can see from the messages that came in, and of course, people celebrating the lives that they led, um, a lot of um, uh, you know, anecdotes from what they did, how they carried them themselves and a lot to learn even for those getting into public administration and different spheres of life you can find this story in your copy of um, your people daily um, as well let's scroll back to the top and see what we have right there inside illicit but hugely lucrative charcoal trade report exposes how commodity is, a mid is uh, in the middle of a vicious scramble between a cartel drawing corrupt traders police politicians and officials charged with saving kenya's forests this is a report i can find on page 12 of your people daily this morning with all the details in there on page two border borders to be trained on safety and investment of course they've become uh, quite the mainstay across urban centers um, uh, especially as far as this is concerned so they need to be trained on safety on how to um, navigate between these particular roads that we have and also how to um, invest their money better. You can find this story on page two of um, your People Daily. And if you don't have your PD, you can get it straight to your phone, by the way. The number that you dial is star uh, 550 star 4 hash. It's only 10 shillings and it gets straight to your phone courtesy of the People Daily and Safaricom. Quickly, before you leave the PD, Kenya gets a 263 billion shilling loan from IMF for COVID relief. This is also a story that you can get on page 12. And any time you see such a story and such a figure, of course, it goes back to the public debate that's been going on in terms of how we are balancing our public debt, especially as we get into um, a post-COVID recovery plan. But you can find this story on page 12 of your PD this morning. Let's see what we have on the standard now. Let's scroll up. It's the same story right there. Haji. Peace broker and schemer, they call him. Many will remember Haji who uh, uh, died and was buried yesterday, aged 80, for chairing the BBI team and as a two-term senator for Garissa County. Yet he was much more than that, both in his public roles and in quiet behind-the-scenes tasks in uh, northeastern Kenya and neighboring counties. You can find this story uh, in your copy of uh, your standard this morning. Um, they have a special on this um, as well. Also, as you look at that, um, the financial standard just in uh, just giving an investigation into the state of our national airline, Kenya Airways, uh, shattered pride, they're calling it at this particular point in time. Where does it go from here as an airline? They re recently got um, a bailout from the government, but is that what's needed in terms to get them back, um, you know, uh, soaring high into the skies, as we'd say? You can find that story in your copy of um, your standard therein. And as you look at that, still matters uh, economics, cost of fuel and power may rise over draft rules. You can find this story as well in your copy of your uh, standard on page 24. And that's a double well, I mean, you think about it because as of yesterday, very many Kenyans talking about um, having a pain at the pump as fuel, rise, uh, fuel prices rose. So what does this mean even as we have a new um, set of draft regulations coming in? That can be found in your standard. Move it along to the Daily Nation now. Hustler Thunderbolt, they're calling it. Deputy President William Bruto's campaign slogan targeted by a new bill that uh, prescribes five years in jail or five million shillings fine for any leader who propagates quote-unquote, class divisions in the country. Once convicted, such leaders will also be barred from holding public office. This is a story on page 6 
of um, your daily nation. You can get the details of that particular story um, there. Also, even as you look at that, Yusuf Haji, a power man for all seasons, uh, going to the details of the life and times of um, someone who started off in the civil service, rose all the way to the Ministry of Defense and served at the Senate as well. So all the intrigues of his life and what he actually um, did, even behind the scenes, can be found in your copy of uh, your daily nation this morning. Finally, we look at the front page of the Star. Let's scroll up on that. Uhuru and Ruto meet as police arrest DP allies. This um, happened um, in Kisi yesterday. Deputy Governor Maangi, MP Osoro, ex-Mayor Omwando locked up um, at this particular point. Of course, what we got from this story is that um, they'd gotten reports that um, some uh, youth had been mobilized to heckle during this particular funeral, and that's why they had been taken in. But you can find this story as well on page 6 of your uh, star this morning with all the details there. So that's what you're up, uh, waking up to as far as your dailies are concerned um, this morning. But right here, we're talking about what they're saying every time they go to rallies, that you really need to separate and delink what is this BBI process going on right now in terms of uh, the referendum, constitutional amendment bill, and elections for 2022? Is it possible? Is it practical? We'll talk about that in a bit. Welcome to KTT4 this morning. Welcome back, of course. Um, we're getting into the discussion, and we love it when you're part of it. Once again, you can get me at I am Jeff Morte or at KUTT4 TV. Have a panel uh, both within studio and without. Let me start in studio um, as uh, my panelists discover that, indeed, it is six degrees of separation. Wherever you go, Joy Mdivo, <laughs> Executive Director of the East Africa Center for Law and Justice. Morning, Joy. Good morning, Jeff. Karibu Sana, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And an unlikely connection that you two made between yourselves and your parents, mm. <laughs> Bonke Omwai, uh, political analyst as well. Good morning. Good morning. Karibu Sana, welcome to the show. Thank you. Asante We're also joined by Gloria Oroba. She's on the line as well. Uh, Gloria, if you can hear me, let me start with you very quickly. Morning. Good morning, Jeff. Um, um, how are you today? Uh, I'm tired, but uh, I'm here. <laughs> Thank you for having me on the show. I'm sorry that um, we are unable to, to do it uh, via Zoom or in studio. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, there's a lot of things that have been happening in CC, and uh, so circumstances at the moment are difficult. Okay, and even as you talk about that very quickly, even before we get into uh, the main piece of our conversation right now, um, what's the status of what's been happening in Kisi? Because as of yesterday, we saw um, Deputy Governor being arrested, Osoro being arrested as well, on that, on allegations of them mobilizing hecklers uh, to be at the funeral. Any, any word on how that is right now? Have they all been released at this point? Uh, I'm in Kisi, and actually one of the reasons I was uh, unable to join is because... Uh, um, that uh, they fear of being arrested. So I'm actually in Kisi, and it's, um, let's just say there's a lot of intimidation on the ground. Um, the police are being misused. Uh, the orders, as usual, are from above. Um, I can tell you for a fact that um, yesterday, um, the people that were arrested yesterday, they were actually arrested for no reason. I was with uh, Deputy Governor George Mangi. We had gone to receive the deputy president at the landing site, and um, when we arrived, we, you know, introduced ourselves, and we were standing very peacefully, just the two of us and uh, our aides, uh, waiting for um, the deputy president who was just about to land. And uh, from nowhere, the police vehicle came and um, informed uh, the deputy governor that um, he he has been summoned to CAB, so he asked if he could use his vehicles, and they refused. They sent him into the vehicle, and um, that's how he got arrested. We were not even able to get a charge sheet until somewhere around, so that was around 9.30, 10, until midday is when they, they, they put a charge sheet and saying um, that he was arrested for incitement. As for Soro, he was in the studio, he was in the stadium, uh, waiting also to be with the mourners and other elected leaders, and he was arrested. Uh, same with Oman. Omanua was arrested the night before, so Omwando. So at the end of the day, what really was happening is there was a, 
um, there was a clear, in, there were clear instructions were given to make sure that the deputy president William Ruto was not received by any leaders in Kisi. That was the first thing. So um, deputy governor Josh Mangi was arrested for receiving the deputy president. That was just basically what it was. As for the other people, um, they, they, it was just to show it was a, it, 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 it basically to show that we are in control, you know. So we have a, a group of bloggers right now who were arrested yesterday. They had gone to to the station to wait for Mangi to be released. When they were standing at the gate, they were arrested. Uh, you saw that we had a press conference um, where we were addressing because you know for us we buried our KC leader yesterday. And uh, what we saw there, Jeff, I can tell you for a fact, it was it was it was really really just a disgrace. Buses and buses of, of people from from um, Kisumu and Oyugis and uh, Homa Bay and wherever were ferried to Kisi with foreigners to come and mourn our Kisi leader. Uh, the people who woke up early to go to, to, to the stadium, the Kisis who woke up early to go to the stadium because they wanted to, to, to send off uh, uh, Simeon and Chai, they were barred from entering the stadium because they, they, they needed to control um, the, the crowd. So at the end of the day, um, the Kisis didn't really mourn Simeon and Chai because they were barred from the stadium. The elected leaders, uh, an order had been put out the night before to be arrested. I was sitting with some of them, and uh, they had to go into hiding. Even now, they've switched off their phones, they've gone into hiding for fear of being arrested. So at the end of the day, Jeff, I can tell you right now in Kisi, it, it, it's very hostile for anyone who's not, uh, who's not singing the praises of, of certain uh, uh, cabinet secretaries and leaders in government. Okay, let me get this uh, conversation in studio as well. Um, Joy, from what we saw yesterday um, and how it's transpiring even today as well, because we're coming at a situation where we have these core principles who ostensibly are trying to bring the country together, but on a backdrop of a lot of political tension and jostling and what we've seen yesterday, and even as they go and tell um, the people, this has nothing to do with 2022, we're doing this for now for posterity, is it possible to delink these things when we see what's going on in real time? Um, somebody said actions speak louder than words. And so in this situation, I think only somebody who's incredibly gullible would believe that what we see happening today has got no bearing in what is going to happen next year. We've gotten to a place where 2022 is no longer four years away. It's actually coming up next year. And so this is what you'd call in football, these are the dying moments. You know, it's just before injury time. This is like the 80th moment now when you're looking at, you know what, there's 10 more minutes of play. If we are not tactical now, we are going into extra time. And so you find that the gloves are off. It's now more bare knuckle where there was a lot of diplomacy before. Now there's not so much. Where people are careful with their words, now they really don't care. We've gotten to a place where the rubber has met the road. And you'll remember just a few weeks earlier, Kisi again was the... The, the backdrop mm -hmm. of a, another showdown uh, at the burial of deputy governor's, the deputy governor's father. And that was, of course, a very shameful display. I'm sure because of the nature of the function yesterday, the state was keen that scenes such as those are not, the, such as those are not repeated. We've had several funerals where it has been rumored that people were planted to walk out of the, the incident so that it looks like people are walking out of the president's speech and such things. So I guess yesterday there was the need to ensure that the burial of the former minister, Simeon Achai, was done in a manner that would not only uh, not disgrace the memory of the deceased or disrespect the family, but also because of the attendance of the head of state and other uh, state officials would also not be an embarrassment. Okay. And therefore the state would come down hard in such instances because of that nature of event. But as Gloria points out, most of these events usually are not just about the family saying goodbye, it's also the region saying goodbye, it's the people saying goodbye. So in trying to manage both, you win some, you lose some, and I think that's what we saw yesterday. But all in all, the, you must congratulate the people of Kisi and also the, the politicians yesterday for managing to keep it civil. Mm -hmm. That, in my opinion, was a big win. Right. If, given the temperatures and where we are, it, it was a big win. And mm -hmm. to have the deputy president, the president, uh, Honorable Raila Odinga, and other dignitaries being able to share a stage and keep it civil, I think 
says a lot about the stature and mm. the level of, of um, respect that right. was accorded to the late Honorable Simbian Nachai. And so we join them in condoling with the family and telling them Polini Sana and also the family of Senator Haji because yesterday was... Was a, was a heavy day for true, Kenya. True, very true. Yes. Bonke, I'll come to you on this as well because when you look at where the BBI stands at this point, for someone who's just objectively analyzing this, as Uhuru exits office, this would be one of the things he should be proud about, bringing the country together. But is that possible with all that's going on? Can he just, you know, use force and get this and literally shove it down all the politicians' throat and say, you'll now be unified by force? Because from where it's going, it's creating more tension than the unity it was supposed to be bringing in the first place. Thank you, Jeff. Well, I think the president is acting. Uh, uh, the president, uh, the president is acting like that because of the pressure he's receiving from the uh, some members of parliament. Remember last week when uh, the father of the deputy governor of Kisi was being buried. I mean, that funeral was very chaotic. Uh, there were some members of parliament, that's Osoro and uh, Simbarati. Right. And it was so embarrassing before the, the DP, the, in the presence of DP and uh, the former prime minister, Rai Lodinga. So you know very well that the minister for the CS for in, uh, internal security is coming from that community. Matiang is one of the powerful cabinet secretaries the, in the Uru's administration. So there is no way... Matiangi could have allowed such thing to happen in the presence of his boss. Mm -hmm. And again, he had to protect his job. Remember when um, Zenya Chai died, the family requested to have a private uh, burial or, or funeral ceremony until the president visited the family and they changed their mind. It means Nechai served this country for very many years, so there's no way they could have buried him like a boy or like mm -hmm. a junior politician. But I know the president assured them for security and decorum during the send-off of their, of, the, of their beloved father. Mm -hmm. Now the fact that Matiangi is a, is a, is a kisi and Matiangi is one of the key advisors of the president, he had to do everything. Remember I had uh, our panelist, the first panelist, uh, blaming the government on this. For this one, I won't blame the government because the government has got a system of getting information. Now, through National Intelligence Service, they were there. And remember, I was reading on the newspaper that there were some undercover police officers who lowered Osoro as his supporters. But my advice to Osoro is a young man. I've been with him in, on, on the same station here, sometimes back in 2017, before he became member of parliament. Being a first member of parliament does not qualify you to abuse your elders. And we've seen such kind of members of parliament that don't make it in the second run. And if their leader fails to achieve what they are fighting for, then they meet mess and no one can even tolerate them in future. So I want our members of parliament to appreciate the fact that uh, somebody like the Right Honorable Rai Lodinga deserves his respect. And also William Ruto deserves a lot of respect. Now coming to the question on, on BBI and what is happening today, whether BBI passes or not, it will not determine who will be the president of this republic. Did, you don't think these two are interlinked in any way? No, no, no. BBI is just a constitutional reform. Whether we change the constitution or not, nature will dictate who will be the president. Remember in 2010 when uh, the constitution was changed and Raila was the prime minister, how come Suhuru came from nowhere and became the president after Kibaki? Mm -hmm. So the fact that a BBI will pass or not, I don't think that will determine if Ruto or Raila will be the president. Let BBI, because how the BBI has been decorated, it, it has been decorated that it can change you know, the political concept of this country. It's building uh, tribal bridges, be it uh, joblessness, and such kind of thing. So we can pass the BBI. But the presidential candidates should just embrace their, their agenda to talk to Kenyans on exactly what they're going to do. So in my opinion, whether we pass BBI or not, the, BBI, the result of BBI will not determine. The BBI is there to rectify and to refine tune the constitution. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll be coming back to that in a bit. Um, Gloria, if I still have you, because I know we'll have to let you go shortly, I wanted you to weigh in on this as well, because we're talking about delinking what is um, the BBI process and elections for 2022 
Is that possible? Is it um, even practical to begin with, uh, politically speaking? Jeff, I want to first of all clarify some information. Uh, Charles Nyachai, who is a friend of ours, and by ours I mean the Tanga Tanga team, I mean uh, the people who were arrested yesterday. We actually, um, when, the, you know, his father died when we were at the funeral of um, the father of uh, Josh Mangi. And uh, we were in the committee that assisted, um, that assisted him even in some of the arrangements of, 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 of uh, Simeon Yachai, the late. So when, you, when I hear someone in studio saying that, uh, you know, the intelligence must have picked up, that there are people coming to cause chaos, we are Charles Nyachai's friends and teammates. And we sat through the preparation of the, of, the, of, the, of the Matanga. Even the night before we were with him, we went to his home. So, I mean, those allegations that uh, Osoro, Mwando, and all these other people, including the deputy governor, were arrested because they were going to cause chaos in that funeral, that is actually very, very misleading. We are actually very shocked that someone could come up with that kind of a propaganda, knowing very well, and you've heard Charles Nyachai openly speak and support the Hustler Nation movement. So that, that information was misleading. And uh, um, now back to what you're talking about in terms of the Constitution and, and then BBI. Uh, our Constitution as is now, we have the Bills of Rights. One of the things that I keep on reminding people is one of the bills we have is a freedom, of, a freedom uh, and security of a person, the right not to be detained without trial, you know, the right not to be tortured, freedom of expression. What we saw yesterday, even if they want to cover it up and say that they wanted to give uh, 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 the late Nyachai a befitting, a befitting send-off, how do you give the late Nyachai a befitting send-off by shutting down the doors uh, of, of the people who literally uh, looked up to him as a leader? The kisses were not in the stadium. We had lures in the stadium. We had uh, guests who were ferried from outside in the stadium. The kisses were actually put locked outside, and you can see that there's evidence there's a lot of things. So as much as um, you want to say that the CS had the CS Matiangi had the responsibility to 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 make sure that it is it was uh, 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 that the shenanigans that we saw in the other funerals did not happen. There, there are many things you, you cannot go against the constitution and go against the rights of people and then justify it by saying it is because you wanted to give him a good send off. When people are being arrested, right now we have these people still in, in, in prison. In fact, uh, 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 Mangi was released last night, but uh, we have Omwando still in prison. Uh, it is alleged that also is in myself, I am on phone because uh, an award has been put out for my arrest. For no reason. So our, the, the, well, you cannot ignore the fact that some of these things that were being done yesterday are political and they have nothing to do with, 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 the, with the funeral. On BBI, right after the, uh, right after the meeting, that, uh, right after the burial that was there with, um, yesterday in Kisi, uh, leaders from the government actually met, uh, rallied the MCAs and met them, even gave them laptops and tablets and money, 30,000, 40,000 here, and then they are trying to sort of bribe them into, into uh, um, uh, making sure that the BBI bill passes at the county assembly. Now, how can we be sitting here and talking about a better Kenya, a future where the, our constitution is being, when behind the scenes it is the same leaders who are actually going against the constitution, pushing corrupt kind of dealings, like going to give MCAs tablets and, and money, 30,000 each, 40,000 here and there, to convince them to vote for the BBI. Because that's what happened in TC yesterday. You can call any of the MCAs who are there. They were called in by a cabinet secretary and they were bribed. That is bribery. So, I mean, we, uh, there's a lot of justifications that are being put on uh, as to why Osoro was arrested. But at the end of the day, whether it is Osoro, whether it is Babu Owino, whether it is Edwin Sifuna or whoever, all these people are Kenyans and they have the right to be treated as Kenyans and they are also covered by the bills of rights. And our constitution is very clear on grounds of arresting someone. So um, in the interest of time, Jeff, I'll tell you this. People in TC are not happy. Let no one told you that there was a peaceful uh, 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 burial yesterday and they are happy. Right now, there's so much tension. People are hiding in TC because of the fact that uh, they are being threatened by arrest, illegal arrest, because of the fact that they are being, uh, the, the police is being used to, to, to push someone's agenda in TC. But we are here to say this. Yatai was our leader in TC. There is a vacuum. 
And we know very well that vacuum will be filled. But we also know that that vacuum is not going to be filled by a cabinet secretary who wants to demand for, for, for respect and to demand for power in the manner with which he's using, by misusing the, the, the state machinery. Okay, Gloria, we hear you on that um, uh, particular point. And also, that brings us to our first uh, break on the show, as far as this is concerned. When you come back after the break, proposed law adds social status as a basis for discrimination by amending the NCIC Act. Some people have said probably this is where you might not be able uh, to mention the word hustler in a public gathering anymore. We have a lawyer here who can um, shed light on what this exactly means. But also, the ramifications of this, even if this um, goes through and becomes successful. After the break, you also take a look at your tweets. You can get me at I am Jeff Morte or KTT4TV. We're back after a short break. Don't go too far.